Hey everyone, I'm in Houston and I needed a lot of copies of Nabil's books for the Our Strong Tower conference next weekend. And I thought, what better place to get tons of Nabil's books than from Michelle, who's right here in Houston. So uh, stopped by to grab a bunch of books and we decided, hey, we're right here. Why not record a video for her channel and for my channel? And uh, what I wanted to talk about here is I get a couple of questions over and over again, wherever I go, and also uh, sent to me as messages. But uh, the, the main questions are, uh, how is Michelle doing? How's Aya doing? And how uh, is Nabil's Muslim family doing? So I get these over and over again, and much better to have you answer all of this than me. So uh, first things first, uh, how have things been going with you? And uh, let us know about how you've been keeping the ministry going. Yeah, uh, so good to be here with David. Hey, Michelle Qureshi. And uh, man, it's been about two years since Nabil passed. And I have actually been doing really well. The primary reason, I and our daughter Aya, who just turned four, hard to believe she was uh, had just turned two when Nabil passed. So we're doing really well, and the primary reason is because of the community we have here in Houston. Even though my family is on the East Coast, um, they have actually seen firsthand just how strong this community is, mm -hmm. and so they have encouraged us to stay where we are, though uh, we are in the process of moving out of this house. This home that you see behind us is what Nabil and I moved into when we first came to the Houston area for his cancer treatment back in 2016, and uh, God just really laid it on my heart. It's time to um, just move to a new place, staying in Houston, but going to a, a different place. It's, that's, been a, that's been an emotional journey already, just realizing what a big deal it is to step down from the place where we had, I mean, just the living room right around the corner. It's where we had so many of the prayer meetings for Nabil's healing and all of the furniture and everything that I have here we had bought together. And so it's just, it's been laid on my heart to go ahead and sell that and start new at, at the new place. And uh, so that's more than a logistical journey. It's been like an emotional journey. So that's been going on. Uh, school just started for Aya though, and she's been doing really well with that. And she has just really been growing and thriving. She's, well, school meaning pre-K four. So we have to think about the big step into official school in kindergarten next year. Uh, fortunately, a few months down the road before I have to figure all that out. But um, yeah, Aya's, Aya's thriving. I'm, I'm doing well. Always have people checking in on me. I'm very plugged into Houston's First Baptist Church. And uh, yeah, we, um, uh, I, I guess that's, that's kind of where I am like personally. And uh, David mentioned uh, ministry. Um, uh, at the beginning of this year, I really felt like God was saying, well, I guess to back up even a little bit more, Nabil didn't start a vlog until he got diagnosed in August. Uh, well, I guess he started in September of 2016. Then he did videos about once every two weeks for the one year that he was on his cancer journey. And very soon after he passed, I had always been in the support role in the background, very happily like serving from the background. And very soon after Nabil passed, God just laid it on my heart to start doing videos uh, talking about what it's like to step into widowhood, to step into single motherhood. And so I have been doing that for these past two years. And at the beginning of 2019, God just said, hey, I want you to keep doing what you're doing, but expound upon it. Do focus on consistency, focus on quality and actually make something, uh, make, uh, help this channel to grow. And so God has been bringing people in my life to help make that happen. People who really know about media ministry, because that's one thing I don't really have a background in. And uh, so that's what's been happening, kind of starting in July of this year, uh, really just started working on that consistency. And so now kind of making that channel my own, the channel that Nabil uh, used to record on. And uh, got a couple of speaking opportunities as well earlier this year, so that's been interesting. Got maybe some others that are that are up in the air, haven't uh, you know, just kind of trying to prayerfully consider where where God would have me go with that because it's still in development. I still mm -hmm. uh, don't uh, I don't have like the clear picture. It's just God's just saying do what you're doing, and um, and I'll lead you from there. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Uh, and a quick follow up on on Aya because. Uh, 
I don't know. It, it seems like she, you know, obviously she was very, very young. So um, I was just wondering, does she, does she kind of know what, 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 what happened with, with Nabil or is that like something in the future and she just, she just doesn't know what happened? Yeah, it's a great question. She, I've seen the development of that over the past couple of years. She is going through phases as she's growing an understanding of the world. She's growing an understanding of what it means to lose your father. Mm -hmm. And where we're at right now, I actually recorded, so on my channel is one recording of the two of us, and she shares something that God laid on my heart to share with her, that when she misses Nabil, we, first of all, we talk very openly about, uh, she called him Baba, she, she'll, she'll just say, I miss Baba, and that makes mm. me sad. And I encourage her to talk about that. I encourage her to recognize that, okay, this is the truth, that something, your dad was sick, and the sickness led to death, but that uh, there's this phrase that I gave her and now she can repeat it herself. She'll say, if we follow Jesus, then when all of our work on earth is done, we can go see Baba in heaven forever. Mm -hmm. And so helping to teach her to rely upon the consistency of the character of God, which is the one thing that does not change. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Uh, when, when, when Nabil got his uh, diagnosis um, and, and when he texted me, uh, the first thought that, that, that popped into my mind uh, was I want to go like make sure he records a bunch of videos for Aya, um, <laughs> like talking to her so that she has them for later. But he was doing so well for a while. I was just like, no, I'm not going to mention that. He was doing so well um, with the treatment and so on. I was just thinking, hey, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to bring him, bring him down and say, hey, let's record some, some videos in case you, in case you die. But uh, so, yeah, I, I've regretted that, that, that I didn't do that. But at the same time, I mean, Nabil is in so many videos and has, you know, a, a biography and uh, has given so many presentations that, and, and then vlogged his entire, his entire journey with cancer that, uh, uh, yeah, I think Aya will have an awesome opportunity to, to learn more about her, her, her dad when she, when she gets older. Um, all right, one more thing. Um, lots of people ask about uh, Nabil's Muslim family. So his mom and dad and his sister, um, how have they been doing? Yeah, so I know that some people have even been asking me or mentioning on uh, comments on my channel. So has Nabil's family come to Christ? And I will say uh, they are still uh, devoutly Muslim. Um, his parents, in fact, uh, Nabil's parents have plugged in even more to the mosque. I think just they're um, really wanting to uh, draw into their own community. And it is something that is sustaining them for right now. Um, then his, uh, Nabil had one sister, she's got three kids. Uh, so she and her husband, um, uh, so she has been, I'll, I'll say that I, they don't always share with me exactly how they're doing. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's cultural. Um, I'll get more from Nabil's sister. She was born here in the U.S., and so her uh, culturally, uh, her uh, her upbringing was different. So, as so, I'll speak for Baji or Wajiha, and Nabil's sister's name. I call her Baji, which means older sister. Baji and I talk once a month, once every three weeks or so, and she'll just be very frank and honest with me. I think that she. So again, she's still devoutly Muslim, but she and Nabil's parents actually have an openness to hearing about Christianity that wasn't there before. I think because they have seen, so Nabil's parents actually lived with us for the last, Nabil's last two or three months of life. And my Christian community got to pour into them. And it was through that, and now they still have relationships with Christians where I think for the first time it was showing them, okay, maybe Christianity or maybe Christians aren't what I perceive them to be, which was pretty much all, it was mostly negative. So that's, that's an advantage because it continues to open up conversation. I'm talking with, I'm t I talk with Baji as a Nabil sister once a month. I FaceTime with, uh, Aya and I FaceTime with Nabil's parents once every two weeks or so. And we've been doing that for the past two years. And in fact, our relationship, so our relationship is growing closer and closer. And now I think some people are probably wondering, well, why don't you share the gospel with them? Why don't you, why aren't you having religious discussions? And what God's laid on my heart is what's most important is to love them where they're at. And where they're at right now, they need emotional support. They need to just have the 
uh, the assistance of putting one foot in front of the other mm -hmm. from day in, day out. So Nabil's parents still struggling a lot. I think they've said this second year has been harder than the first mm -hmm. year. And, uh, but they, but we maintain through the maintenance of our relationship through them and especially them having a relationship with Aya because she's that last living remnant, remnant of their son. Um, I think that has been really life-giving to them. And I'm just trusting God for what he wants to do in their hearts along the way. And right now that's just where we are in this journey. No, no, no I, I, I agree completely. Uh, as far as, um, you know, apologetics or, you know, discussions of religious topics, they've got all the books and lectures of their son to, to, uh, to get all of that kind of stuff from. And so, uh, so yeah, it, it's, it's exciting to see um, what's going to happen. And uh, I happen to know, I happen to know that if, um, if Nabil's early death somehow did eventually lead to his parents um, reevaluating things or being more open and uh, ultimately coming to know Christ, um, if Nabil knew that his death would somehow lead to that, I, I, know, I know the guy, I guarantee he'd say he'd, he'd make that trade in a, in a heartbeat. So, um, all right, well, thank you for joining me here. And for those of you who want more updates or want to see what's going on uh, in Michelle's life and want to see um, how she's continuing the ministry, the easiest way to do that would be to subscribe to her channel and uh, see what's going on. All right, see y'all next time.